phase transfer catalyst or PTC. We shall see uh, what a phase transfer catalyst is and also the various types of phase transfer catalysts in this video. Now, uh, let us see, before going into uh, PTC, let us see what a catalyst is. Now, a catalyst helps in increasing the rate of a reaction, isn't it? And uh, uh, the catalyst itself does not undergo any change during the reaction. It's in fact, we, rege we can regenerate the catalyst. We can get back the catalyst after the reaction is over. So it increases the rate of the reaction without undergoing any change or without uh, getting consumed during the reaction. Now this is carried out by the catalyst either by lowering the energy of the uh, reaction or by altering the mechanism of the reaction. These are the two ways by which a catalyst increases the rate of reaction. And the re, uh, reaction whose rate is increased using a catalyst is called the process of this increase in, in the, the rate of a reaction using a catalyst is called catalysis. Now, when you are using uh, PTC, phase transfer catalyst, as a catalyst, then we call it as phase transfer catalysis. Now, what exactly is PTC? How does it work? Let us see. Now, as the name suggests, phase transfer catalyst helps us to carry out a reaction between two phases. Now, coming to the history of a phase transfer catalyst, it was uh, uh, discovered or introduced in the year 1965, and uh, since its discovery, or since its synthesis, it has been used uh, very much in synthetic organic chemistry okay, for the synthesis of various organic compounds. And uh, uh, it is used for the reaction wherein the reagents are soluble in different solvents. And the phase transfer cat catalysis is a heterogeneous catalysis, that is, the uh, reactants and the catalyst are in different phases okay different uh, say if the reactants are in, in sol a liquid state PTC is in solid state now uh, when we say it is used for the reaction between reagents soluble in different solvents uh, oppositely uh, soluble preferences that means uh, we can carry out a reaction wherein one reagent is soluble in aqueous solvent and the other one in non-aqueous or organic solvent. We need not uh, search for another solvent wherein both these reagents are soluble. So instead of uh, going for a single costly or toxic uh, solvent which dissolves all the reagents, if we are using uh, PTC, we can uh, simply e easily carry out the reaction by using the solution of the reactants in whichever simple solvent it is soluble. So, uh, for example, we can carry out a reaction wherein the nucleophile is water soluble and electrophile is uh, water insoluble. In such a case also, we can carry out the uh, reaction. Okay, so that's what phase transfer catalyst does. It helps us to carry out reaction between the reagents in different phases. In different phases means, uh, here we mean different solvents. It is not necessary that the reaction is between uh, uh, different solvents like, uh, uh, I mean, hydrophilic and hydrophobic reactants, but it can also be employed in different phases in wherein the reactants are in different phases that is liquid solid and liquid gas reactions so the last point okay now uh, uh, so as i said earlier each <coughs> reactant is dissolved in the appropriate solvent 
and uh, the, uh, even if the two solvents are immiscible, doesn't matter. The PTC, T, uh, PTC helps in transportation of one reactant from uh, uh, of transportation of one reactant from one phase to the other phase. Okay, so the PTC acts as an interface or a, a connection between the two invisible solvents, and uh, uh, that PTC will be the site of attack or site of reaction. Now, when you increase the area of the interface, uh, the re rate of reaction can be increased. Now, how does it uh, PTC does uh, how how does it uh, uh, carry out the transfer from one uh, of the reactants. Now PTC has both functional sites to get solubilized in both the systems. Okay, so uh, you can say PTC has a water soluble uh, uh, site and also water in uh, organic solvent soluble site. Okay, so it can easily transfer substance from one system to another system. Alright, in detail, how does it work, we shall be discussing later. The mechanism of PTC we will be discussing later. Okay, now coming to the advantages of uh, PTC. Now, one advantage is it uh, has in every catalytic uh, or uh, catalytic reaction, PT, if you use PTC, the reaction will be faster, you get better yield. Okay, there will be high yield of the reaction. The uh, byproducts form will be less. Okay, the uh, excited reactions form will be less. Also, we need not go for expensive solvents, which will dissolve all the catalysts, I mean, all the reactants together in a single solvent. Okay, and hence we can uh, avoid use of excess chemicals. Okay. And also, the, when we use PTC, we need to provide only mild conditions and the procedure will be easy. Now, because of all these, uh, particularly the uh, formation of few byproducts and uh, uh, no need to use of expensive solvent, the PTC is especially useful in green chemistry. Okay? So, uh, instead of uh, any expensive toxic or hazardous solvent, we can simply use water for a reaction. The uh, use of toxic hazardous organic solvent can be reduced. So, uh, PTC uh, is a very good uh, catalyst used in green chemistry. Alright, so now coming to the types of phase transfer catalysts. Now, there are different types of PTCs. We have a quaternary ammonium salt. We have a heterocyclic quaternary ammonium salts. Okay. The phosphonium salts are another type of PTC. Uh, crown ethers are another type of PTC. And then we have even cryptans uh, can be, are used as phase transfer catalysts. So, the, basically these are the five types of phase transfer catalysts. Among these, the quaternary ammonium salts are uh, very much in use. Okay, they are mostly used because they are cheap and easily available. Now, let us see a few examples of each type of uh, PTC. Coming to the quaternary ammonium salt, now as I said, it is the cheapest and also hence it is widely used for industrial uh, purpose, industrial synthesis of various uh, compounds. Now, as uh, you know, quaternary ammonium salt has a nitrogen with four, uh, uh, four groups attached to it and it will be having a positive charge. And since it is having a positive charge, there will be a negatively charged ion associated with this. Now, this is dialyl dimethyl ammonium chloride. You change these four groups attached to the nitrogen, you get different types of quaternary ammonium salt. All these you can use. Another example here you have benzyl tributyl ammonium chloride. This is benzyl group and three butyl group are attached. 
कितनी नहीं कीजिए सो बेंजाइल ट्राइब्यूटाइल अमोनियम क्लोराइड यू कैन हैव बेंजाइल ट्राइब मीथाइल अमोनियम क्लोराइड सी हियर यू हैव विथ थ्री मीथाइल ग्रुप्स एंड वन बेंजाइल ग्रुप अटैच्ड टू द नाइट्रोजन ओके देन यू हैव टेट्राइथाइल अमोनियम साइनाइड हियर इ एनियन सो साइनाइड so here on instead of uh, chloride you can even use bromide no 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 issues okay so you can have a bromo uh, anion chloroanion iodoanion this is tetraethyl ammonium cyanide this is uh, trimethyl phenyl ammonium chloride trimethyl phenyl ammonium chloride You're using a phenyl thing here yeah. so you change the uh, alkyl or aryl group the r group attached to the nitrogen you get different types of cotton ammonium salts which can be used as the phase transfer catalyst now heterocyclic ammonium salts you have these types of heterocyclic ammonium salts which can be used you have uh, enyl oxy carbonyl oxy succinimide so this is enyl oxy carbonyl oxy this is the succinimide okay this is in heterocyclic ammonium salt there will be a heterocyclic ring or heterocyclic moiety attached to it okay that's it <clears throat> now here you have this is one butyl 2,3 dimethyl imidazolium chloride okay one butyl 2,3 dimethyl imidazolium chloride this is imidazole then you have here Three ethyl five two hydroxy ethyl four methyl thiazolium bromide. This is thiazolium bromide. Two hydroatoms are here. Okay, another thiazolium compound. Three benzyl five two hydroxy ethyl four methyl thiazolium chloride. Again, okay, now here uh, the uh, sulfate is bisulfate as the uh, anionic moiety. One methyl imidazolium hydrogen sulfate. Okay, so all these we have lots of examples for both heterocyclic ammonium salt and quaternary ammonium salt. Now crown ethers. Uh, before that, phosphonium salts. We have the tetraphenyl phosphonium bromide. You can even have tetraphenyl phosphonium chloride. Uh, this is tetrabutyl phosphonium bromide. You can even have chloride of the same. Tetrakis hydroxymethyl phosphonium chloride. So here also, we are changing the uh, groups attached to the phosphonium part. Okay, here this is methyl triphenoxy phosphonium iodide. These are three phenoxy groups and one methyl group. To so change the R group attached to the phosphonium ion, we get different uh, types. So now one more thing, the phosphonium. Uh, 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 what is it? The phosphonium ions or phosphonium. Uh, salts are uh, uh, they are uh, one second these phosphonium salts are can tolerate high temperatures but uh, they are not stable towards base and once it comes in contact with the base it is converted to uh, phosphine oxides so that's a disadvantage of phosphonium salt but they are highly temperature as uh, so, uh, stable. Now, crown ethers, we have got different crown ethers which are used for uh, as PTCs. Here you have uh, uh, one of uh, four 10 dias are 12 crown four ether. Another example is uh, this one for phenyl in 34 crown 10 ether. Another example, benzo 12 crown four ether. Okay, here you have 24 crown eight ether. And also, two hydroxy methyl 12 crown 4 ether. Other than these, we have got different types of crown ethers which are used for SPPCs. And finally, cryptans. The cryptans are bicyclic or polycyclic multidentate ligands. With, uh, they form multidentate ligand with a variety of cations. They are three dimensional analogs of uh, crown ethers. They are cage-shaped selective ligands, particularly for alkali and alkaline earth metals. And they can, unlike crown ethers, cryptans can bind the ion using both nitrogen and oxygen donors. They have got better selectivity and strength for binding and all, but they are expensive.
So the expensive nature and the difficulty to prepare uh, is a disadvantage when we uh, think of a cryptance as ETC. So, uh, but still, since cryptans can uh, bind the incoming ion, the ion using both nitrogen and oxygen, in certain cases we can, we, we may have to use cryptans as PTC. Also, they are highly selective in nature. They are more for alkali metals and alkaline earth metals, ligands of that class of uh, ligands, cations. Okay, now let's see one example of a krypton. Now this is uh, the uh, usually used commonly present krypton, 2 2 2 krypton. Now uh, see here, uh, there are uh, two methylene groups between oxygen and nitrogen everywhere, okay. Uh, between every heteroatom, there, is, there are two carbon atoms. So this is a, a 2 2 2, the 2 2 2 means to hetero, num, the number of oxygen atoms on each bridge. Okay, now uh, the IUPAC name of uh, this 222 krypton is 1, 10, diaza, 4, 7, 13, 16, 21, 24, hexa, oxa, bicyclo, 8, 8, 8, hexa, cosine. Now, 1, 10 is 1 here and uh, then comes the 10th number, the nitrogen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's the first number. And 4, 7, 13 to 24, that's the position of the oxygen. Here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You have 16 here, 21, 24. Okay? Hexa, oxa, 6, uh, oxygen, bicyclo. It's a bicyclic compound. Hexacosane. Okay? So, uh, these uh, such cryptans, these are the, this is one commonly used cryptan. But still, uh, I mean, uh, uh, because of the uh, expensive and difficult in preparation nature of cryptan, it is not used. So, in all these types of uh, PTCs which we have discussed, it is the quaternary ammonium salt which is commonly used as the uh, PTC. Okay, because it is easy to uh, prepare and also it is less expensive. So, these are the uh, uh, type, various types of uh, PTCs and also what a PTC is. Now, the rest of uh, the information regarding PTC will be followed in the uh, coming videos. Hope this has been clear to you regarding the types of PTC and also the uh, uh, what exactly is PTC. Uh, if you have any clarifications to be done, please feel free to ask. And also, please do refer other resources too. Thank you for watching. Thank you.